This is a spacebar. But not just any spacebar, but an ABS spacebar set from GMK in black. This set costs roughly $15. Now this is a keyboard, specifically an EUSO TKL mechanical keyboard with hot swap sockets. It includes a spacebar as part of the keyboard. This also cost me roughly, you guessed it, $15. How can this be, you say? How can an entire keyboard, let alone a mechanical hot swap keyboard, cost as little as a GMK spacebar set? If you don't believe me, take a look. This is a screenshot from my Amazon order. Yes, yes, the regular price of the keyboard is supposed to be $25, bucks, but EUSO has sales almost every other day, ranging from $5 to $10. I got lucky and I bought mine with red switches with a $10 off coupon, so $15. I think at this point, I could probably say that this is the cheapest hot swap TKL mechanical keyboard you could probably buy, probably in the world. So something this cheap cannot be good, right? I mean, this has to be utter trash at $15. Well, that's what we're going to find out. This is Scott K and welcome to Keyboard. Let's get started. So the EUSO K620 mechanical keyboard is a 10 keyless form factor keyboard. I was able to opt for the red switch version and received it with these interesting Utemu red box linear switches. They're surprisingly not too bad for being in a $15 keyboard. As mentioned before, the EUSO K620 does feature hot swap sockets, although they're not the standard KO hot swap. They're rather a cheaper Utemu hot swap socket. This is kind of like how a Milmax socket works. There's a small caveat about this hot swap socket. Not all cherry style switches actually fit this thing without modification. I mean, come on, it's $15. It fits Utemo switches because they have a skinnier pin design versus some of the other popular cherry style switches. But there are some good switches that does fit, and we'll get to that later. It also even comes with keycaps. They're no GMK keycaps, but they're sufficient double shot ABS OEM caps with shine through legends. This thing even has per key LED. Not RGB, but this specific one comes with a bluish white color. However, check this out. It's got that sweet, sweet RGB side strip that you could actually even control the speed and even the color. And finally, the stabilizers. At this price point, you'd expect some weird contraption or even Colstar, but no. It has cherry style plate mounted stabs. That's pretty wild. Yeah, yeah, the USB cable is hardwired on this guy, but come on, it's 15 bucks. By now, you're probably wondering, what does this thing sound like? Yeah, it sounds like it's $15, but when I did a poll before, you wanted to see me mod the cheapest possible board, so challenge accepted. So let's start by stripping all the stock keycaps off the keyboard first. Then you can see the Utemo Reds in their full glory. I mean, for what they are, they're actually not that bad when you lube and film them. Now with all the switches removed, you can actually see that the plate is plastic and it's integrated into the top frame. Gotta cut the cost somewhere, right? Then you undo these 9 little screws from the top and then you can see the top actually pries off fairly easily. Then you can see the nice plastic plate underneath. What's interesting is that they have these little ribbing below them to I'm pretty sure for the structure. Now with the top frame and the plate removed, you can see the green PCB below and how it sits pierced by a million standoffs. So this is a tray mounted design. Here is a closer look at the Utemu hot swap sockets. They look like little narrow Milmax sockets for sure. If you remove the PCB and flip it around, you can see the USB cable connected via a socket below. Overall, a very generic PCB board with nothing too special. Now with everything out, you can see the cavernous lower case. Combination of thin plastic and big open space causes all of that hollow sound you're hearing in the sound test. That's the first thing we're going to have to fix. I'm sure you've seen this before, but it's the Noiko 80mm automotive sound denner. We're going to be using this to help create a denser sound as well as to provide the plastic case more heft. Since there's so much space, I'm also going to add in a layer of zip and fit liner to fill the void as well. 
Man, now we're pulling out all the stops. We're gonna be adding some masking tape under the PCB to help improve its stock. This is also known as the Tempest or the Tape Mod for those of you that have seen this before. I ended up using three layers. Moving on to the plate. Remember when I said the plate was made of plastic and there are little ribs underneath? Plastic hitting PCB is not the most pleasant sound, so I want to dampen this a bit. But because of the ribs, normal foam will not cut it. So I use some thin adhesive foam and apply it to the sections underneath to help close the gap and create a dampening buffer. Before we assemble everything back together, this wouldn't be a keyboard video without, you guessed it, O-rings. Since this is a tray mounted design, I'm going to apply O-rings over the 9 screw points. I will link the details in the description below. After carefully placing the top plate and the case back on, I used the smaller O-rings around the case screw to create a burger mount scenario. Finally, for the plate mount stabilizers, I would strongly recommend using a piece of band-aid on the edge of the stab cut out to help create a tighter fit. Then I clipped and looped the stabilizers for best performance as well. Now let's move on to the fun part, the switch selection. Remember when I said not all Cherry MX style switches fit into the Utemo socket? However, Akko CS switches do. There are a variety of great Akko CS switches at a killer price, so this just seems like the perfect combination. And to top everything off, I removed the stock keycaps and went with some Mistel Double Shot PBT keycaps to improve the overall feel and sound. There you have it, the cheapest mechanical keyboard in the world is now improved. So did it work? Only one way to find out. Let's take it for a spin. Yeah, so what do you think? I think this turned out pretty nice for something that started at $15. The overall hollowness of the case improved quite a bit, and the keyboard ended up feeling much more solid than originally started. The Akko CS switches are longer stem pole and create a clackier sound, but matched up with the double shot PBT caps, I think it's a good combination. This was a challenge from you guys to me, so leave your feedback in the comments whether you feel this turned out okay, or if Scott from keyboard got defeated by the $15 EUSO. The EUSO K620 is far from perfect, but this keyboard is the ultimate try it out keyboard for those who are interested in the hobby and want a platform to learn and explore some switches, keycaps, and the like. And for $15, you cannot go wrong. As usual, if you liked the video, please like and subscribe and I'll have more content for you in the future. Thanks.